When we wake up sunshine, it's time for Simply Existing with Alex Guerrero. Play, 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 play that intro. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Simply Existing. This is episode 44. Um, before we get into the topics of discussion and the festivities for this episode, if you will, um, I do kind of want to start off on a bit of a serious note. Um, some of you might remember back in February, I was a guest on the Euro podcast, and I just want to ask everybody listening, everybody watching right now, keep uh, to keep Fridge, who hosts the show with uh, Xavier, uh, please keep Fridge in your thoughts and prayers right now. Um, I won't elaborate on the situation, just out of respect for their privacy at this time, but, you know, just keep them in your thoughts and prayers, please. I just want to, you know, send all the love and positive vibes and support to the Euro podcast right now at this time. You know, Fridge is one of the nicest people that I've met in my very short time of podcasting. And so, you know, please and thank you, everybody. Fridge, we love you. And with that said, let's get into the episode. Let's get into our first order of business, which I actually kind of just touched on. Um, my very short time of podcasting. Simply Existing is turning one year old in the next couple of weeks. July 15th, we'll say. You know, that's the first, that's the day I dropped the announcement of it. The first episode and stuff like that. So, it doesn't even feel like it's been a year, honestly. Even though we're here we are, 44 episodes in. And I still feel like it's... I, feel, I still feel like I've been doing this for like maybe three or four months. Not even like half a year. It doesn't even feel like half a year. It feels like I've been doing this like three to four months. And, you know... I remember at one point, maybe episode 20 something, I said, like, yeah, you give me an episode number and I could tell you like what was said, who was on, just like the overall topics of that episode. And here we are at episode 44. I can barely even tell you what we talked about last week. You know, obviously something about Latinas, of course, but as we do in every episode. So (laughs) it's just one of those things, you know, it just like kind of starts to, they all start to like blend together for the most part. So I don't know. I still haven't even planned like really what I want to do in terms of like an anniversary thing because I have to do like an anniversary special or something. So and you know, you know what? Maybe it could be like, a, you know, because the podcast started like a few days after my birthday. So it could be like a collaborative, like happy birthday, Alex, happy birthday, simply existing podcast special thingy. So we'll see. We'll see what that becomes. And, um, you know, more on that later follow us on social media just like to get more details on that whenever you know the time is i still got a plan so just follow just follow just follow people um what else what else um i got a whiteboard i got a whiteboard to keep myself organized but i'm just like trailing off anyway i'm just like kind of going at it like the way i always do but yeah 44 episodes in i'm trying to freaking coordinate myself unbelievable i'm actually i'm actually just a little off the wall today because it's like today's monday it's two days before the episode is supposed to drop and i just like it was a busy weekend i had no time i just like i couldn't do it when i wanted to do it and so i'm one of those people when like my routine or schedule is thrown off ever so slightly i just like can't function i can't function i don't know if it's an adhd thing which i am not diagnosed which I know you guys are probably just like, go get fucking diagnosed already so I don't have to say, hey, oh, my undiagnosed ADHD. You know, it's just a weird thing. It just like completely throws me off. And, you know, it's not that I don't think I'll have time to edit and put out the episode or anything. It's just like, this is not what I'm supposed to be doing right now. This is not my usual groove or rhythm or, you know what I mean? So I was kind of like annoyed just setting up and like trying to get started. I must have started like a million times. You know, start, rest- start, stop, restart, start, stop, restart. And it's just annoying. And then the funny thing is I ask Alexa, like, what time it is? And she tells me the time. And I realize, like, two hours have gone by. Two hours have gone by and I've done absolutely fucking nothing. And she's just like, she's like, the time is five, whatever. What time is it? We'll pretend it's now. The time is 5.37 p.m. Hope you've had a great Monday. And I'm just like, you know what, Alexa? No, I haven't had a great Monday. Thank you very fucking much. It's kind of like an actually, it's actually kind of a shitty afternoon because I'm trying to like get this shit done. 
you know not for the sake of just like oh god i gotta put out a fucking episode but it's just like you know i know what i want to talk about i know what topics are at hand but sometimes it's just hard which any other podcasters listening i i I know i ask you guys if you can relate to this like you know if you know you want to talk about something like i really want to talk about like you know say i don't know say i really want to talk about like empanadas it's like great what about empanadas like, I know I love them. I know I like, you know, to eat empanadas. I know I'm craving empanadas. But it's like, okay, what else about that? I can't just come on here and say, yeah, empanadas are cool. I like empanadas. So what else? You know, it, it's just annoying. It really is annoying. And it's become difficult. It's like, I feel like, I don't know. I feel like in the 30s, now that we're out of the 30s in terms of the episodes, I feel like the 30s, I hit like a freaking not a rut you know i think there were some solid episodes in the 30s but i felt like i got stuck a lot like i'm just like what the fuck do i say that i haven't said already you know not you know i just like i don't like to talk just to talk so although this is pretty much what it is the podcast it's just me talking for the sake of talking and you know i'm trying to keep myself a little coordinated Just kind of write in my notes app, just like, all right, let's talk about this next week. Let's talk about that. Let's, um, all right, if we didn't get to something, let's see if we can work it in. So instead of just like talking like, just like off the top of my head. Yeah, I just can't. Some days, you know, and some days they're pretty good. Some days are pretty good. I can't, you know, I don't like, uh, I stay consistent. I talk about one thing and then it leads into the next thing pretty uniquely, pretty, uh, not uniquely, pretty, uh, seamlessly so it's it's very hard when i don't get to do that every single week like i think i had two back-to-back episodes where i didn't like cut that much or anything and i get frustrated when i have to cut or like i lose a thought it is frustrating so you know just try i i this is my advice to any new podcasters too just like try to be consistent but it don't get so worked up when you can't be consistent like if you got to cut a million times whatever who gives a fuck you know you can get away with it in audio but you know i I know in video it's like very obvious but it it is what it is there's good weeks and bad but enough with there's a cut right there actually in case you missed it um enough of my podcast struggles and just like my overall anxiety over not being on my schedule want to hear some crazy weird shit I learned the other day from my sister that this 98-year-old woman in our neighborhood passed away recently. And, you know, I don't know how long she was left there, but they found her body. And along with her body, they found two boxes of grenades in her basement. Now, it, they're, said, they're said to be grenades from, like, like really, not nothing current. Like, old, old grenades from, like, World War II. So I guess she had a husband that served in World War II, and those were just, like, relics from that period. And, you know, old people, they're always hoarding shit. They always have just stuff in their basement. And it's just like, you know, why the fuck do you have this? So rationally, I thought rationally at first when I heard that news. I'm just like, yeah, she probably had like a husband that served in the, you know, in the in the military at that time. And then my imagination starts to kick in. And I'm just like, you know, she may have had a husband that served in World War II. But what if she was holding on to these grenades in case, you know, she needed to retaliate against, like, the gentrifiers. You know, one day she's just had enough. She's been watching from afar all the shit that's going on in the neighborhood. Just like, oh, look at this other hipster cafe. Look at these bastards from freaking, I don't know, Seattle or wherever they come from. Invading our space. Putting up freaking coffee shops and vegan bakeries. And one day she just, like, freaking tastes the grenades and well, goes, bah! Just, like blows it all to hell and just like you know in in memory of her husband who served in world war ii who came to this country from puerto rico and you know built the house they live in and you know that she died in and you know just all all this other shit i don't know what the fuck i'm saying this is freaking stupid (laughs) oh god bro my imagination takes me to like some wild places which you know as somebody who you know just kind of who has a wild imagination and already just like suffers from undiagnosed ADHD, which I don't know if I said this already. I, I bet you guys are probably tired of me saying this shit. It's just like, go get fucking diagnosed already. But 
It, my mind goes to like some interesting places. It's just like, I don't even realize it sometimes. Like, do you guys get this? Like sometimes it's almost like that effect you have when you're driving. Like, you know, when you're driving and like you just go a couple of miles and like you realize like, oh shit, wait, I'm driving. And like, I feel like I haven't been in focus the last like 10 miles. How the fuck am I still alive? Like, I feel that, but like in everyday life, just like normal things, you know, I'll just be sitting at work and I'll just like be staring out the door and not even realize it. And like my mind just like is like in freaking Narnia or something. All right. I'm with the centaur from Narnia, just like, I don't know, smoking, you know, freaking crack. And I don't know. It's just like interesting things. And I'm like, you know, you make up scenarios in your head. You just like kind of go visit alternate realities when you're just like kind of in this state. So, yeah, that's that's my day to day. It's my day to day. I find it, you know, how do I function as an adult? I don't even know, man. It's so weird. It's such a strange phenomenon. I, I don't know. I don't know. And then like they say, like, uh, you know, this isn't normal. Like people, no, like, normal people don't even like have this shit, which I'm like, you know, for the most part, a lot of people I know just like, you know, in general throughout life, they've experienced this in some way, shape or form. And then, you know, people must not be normal in general. You know what's interesting? I may have talked about this before. People don't have, people aren't supposed to have an internal monologue. Like, you know, when you think and like, you just kind of hear your own voice, just like kind of talking, just like, uh, kind of like, like, oh shit. Yeah. I got to go to the grocery store. Like when you're walking down the street and you're just like, what the fuck is this guy looking at? Look at his sandals. Is he looking at you funny? He's totally noticing that you're overthinking his presence right now. Stuff like that, which is, that's what I deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. I overthink, I'm very hyper aware of my presence around other people. And I just think like, oh God, they fucking think I'm like fucking weird or something or something. I don't know. It's just crazy. It's just very weird. I don't know. And then, you know, normal people don't have that apparently. Some people I've read, I've never met them, but I've read online that people, some people don't have an internal monologue like that. And I just find that hard to believe. I'm just like... First of all, I think I would go crazy if it was just quiet. You know, as crazy as my brain and my thoughts like kind of drive me, as much as they drive me crazy, I kind of need that to keep me sane. To know that like, you know, my brain is functioning. Because I can't imagine just like sitting here right now doing the podcast, just like quiet thoughts, you know, brain empty, but like there's thoughts happening, you know? So it, it's very strange how the brain works. And I learned this maybe about a year or two ago that you're not supposed to have, apparently, you're, you're apparently not supposed to have an internal monologue like that. I think that's like definitely a sign of mental illness, which we all know if you've been listening since the beginning, I am definitely fucking mentally ill, man. But like I said, uh, like two weeks ago or something like, you know, there's therapy, there's, you know, shit like that, but this is more fun, you know, and this, this is a, a totally excusable freaking medium for me to be able to talk to myself but i don't know man the brain is a funny place that should be the episode title the brain is a funny place it's weird i just like totally trailed off from the 98 year old <laughs> that's actually hilarious i'm a fucking dumbass oh god there we go the first self-deprecating statement of the day actually no that's probably like the fucking fifth or sixth you know self-deprecation is weird it's very interesting though like why do we like self-deprecate why do we like talk shit about us like it's not even a purposeful thing i'm not even saying this for like comedic effect or anything it's just like it kind of just happens you know i don't know it's weird i don't know why i find myself doing a lot of shit though it's like it's very interesting just the thoughts that come to our head which you know speaking of this is actually a good segue the other day I was about to jump in the shower and I was going to put on my normal, like, um, you know, on repeat. I, I just listened to my on repeat, which is mostly like this new bad bunny album and some other singles and some other stuff that's out there. It's the same shit all, you know, just all the time daily for like a, you know, for like three months. And then, you know, just like was about to get in, I set one foot in and I, I'm just like, my brain's just like put on Eminem. It's been a while. Put on Eminem. So I just put on Eminem on Spotify, on Shuffle. And, you know, the songs that this man has, 
you know, say what you want about Eminem. I know he's like homophobic. He's, you know, had some shit in the past. No, I don't even say he's homophobic. You know, he's made some homophobic statements and shit. And he said some fucked up shit. He's had beef in the past. But um, this man's got songs, bro. Like, I used to listen to him a lot when I was like 12, 13, 14. That was where, like, those, like around those years, you know, I wasn't like old enough yet when like the Marshall Mathers LP or like the Slim Shady LP came out. And uh, I just like found my, found myself like listening to this like you know when I became older and kind of heard more about Eminem because I got the time when I was like 12 13 he was putting out um relapse he had relapse recovery and that's like that was my era of Eminem that I became that I was like a fan that was like you know his new stuff at that time and then of course I listened to the old stuff and so I'm just in the shower I'm just like singing word for word every single song and, like, I don't know, Eminem is one of those artists, like, I don't really listen to him much now. I don't really listen to his new stuff that much at all. But the old stuff, man, Till I Collapse, when that comes on, I feel like, I feel like if I were in wrestling, that would be my entrance song, Till I Collapse. Like, I, I turned that on in the shower, that came on in the shower, and I felt so empowered it's just like, I don't know. I didn't know what the fuck I wanted to do. I felt like I could lift a freaking school bus. I could deadlift a freaking school bus. It's in, it's insane, like, what that song makes me feel. It's absolutely crazy. And it's like, you know, then you could start going into, like, the collaborations with Dre. Just, like, the, like, a uh, Guilty Conscience. That whole, like, skit of a song. It's, that's like, you don't see anything like that these days. That's crazy. You don't see any songs like that. Like any songs that do like attempt that, they just don't hit in the same capacity. It's crazy. I don't know. I don't know what I wonder what it was that was in my brain that's just like listen to Eminem. And um, you know, like all this like the sadder songs, like the much more serious songs, like what's that one he did? Um When I'm Gone, oh my god. I wanted to cry. It's just like, <laughs> you know, it's just like it's like one of those really like serious Eminem songs that's just like it really hits. And you know, Eminem is one of those artists, like no matter what, he just like he'll always say something, doesn't matter what song, that it's just gonna stick with you in your head. And it's gonna create some sense of like shock value or just like pain or just some sort of emotional kind of response. And so, you know, even I remember off the recovery album, Spacebound, that, that's one of my favorite fucking songs. Spacebound is just like you know i don't know what i i how i identified with that song at um how old was i in 2010 like to like 13 14 years old i don't know how i identified with it but it's like damn shit hit i probably identify with it more now as an adult but i don't know when you listen to people from such a young age their song you know when you they actually resonate with you when you love somebody so much like an artist like eminem at that at such a young age like it doesn't matter what the song is actually actually about um it's just if it resonates with you it resonates with you in some way shape or form you know so that was like that was like what last week i just jumped in the shower and then the next day i jumped in the shower and like i just played my on repeat it was like i was it was like i was in a trance it was just like put on eminem put on eminem you know what put on eminem yeah you know Again, the brain is a funny place, people. That's funny. Shout out Eminem, if you're listening. Which, I don't know, maybe you are. I don't know what you do. <laughs> I don't know. Eminem lives a pretty, like, private life, I feel like. He doesn't really... You don't really see him out and about. You don't see him much in the news these days. You know, he doesn't have much of an online presence. It's just kind of, you know, he's just like... He'll put out an album every now and then and just... That's it. I mean, he did perform at the Super Bowl with dre and snoop like this uh this last super bowl i think it was which feels so long ago i can't believe that was uh you know this year i think it was february something like that i don't know i don't really follow the super bowl but yeah i i would love to live like a private life like eminem like you know sometimes i think about just like tossing all my social media and just kind of just like becoming a recluse because it's like who is this for who is this for who's all this uh content for and i'm not just talking about the, i'm not talking about the podcast but it's just like who gives a fuck about my selfie in the backyard? Who gives a fuck about, you know, what song I'm listening to, the 15 seconds of the chorus or whatever, you know? So 
I don't know. It's weird. And I feel like the more that like social media platforms like make you, you know, the more they take away from your privacy, like uh, for example, like TikTok adding profile views and stuff like that. I feel like the more like they do stuff like that, the less I want to be on social media, the less, you know, I feel, I don't want to say safe, but I feel less like, like I, I'm like, okay, at least before I knew like, you know, people are watching probably, but it's not like it's showing me, you know what I mean? If that makes sense. So like, here's the thing with TikTok, TikTok in particular, like they started doing profile views and you like, you have the option to turn them off. But here's the thing, when you turn them off, not only does it allow, you know, it doesn't let you see, it doesn't let people see that you viewed their profile, but it doesn't let you see who viewed yours. You know, it's not like, you know, you can have, you know, one or the other. It's like both or, you know, nothing. Either that or, you know, you just turn it on and you see who watches your shit or, and, you know, but you also are exposed as watching people's uh, profiles and stuff. And I don't know. For, for the people that just leave it on, like, you know, that they don't give a fuck, not me, but, um you know, the people that leave it on and they just, like, let people, like, see their shit or, like, they, you know, you, you gotta be truly bold, though. You gotta be truly bold to just, like, leave that function on and just, like, not give a fuck that you're watching people's profiles, which I don't really care either. It's just, like, I don't, I don't think it's really a sus thing. Like, listen, I'll tell you right now, if, like, Instagram and, um... Twitter started doing this tomorrow. If they if Twitter and Instagram started allowing profile views tomorrow, I don't think I would give that much of a fuck depending on who it is. Cuz I'll tell you right now, if I'm looking at your profile or if I'm checking your profile out, odds are I just think you're cute or something. Like I don't know. Like um for example, like I I do have my TikTok crush that like I'll just like, you know, occasionally just like i'm guilty of it you know i just like you know tiktok crush like okay like she cute or whatever let me like you know check her out just why not that i don't give a fuck about but it's just like when people are like watching me like certain people like some people that i don't even know that i'm just like wait who are you why are you watching my shit i get all defensive i start looking like what if i posted like what's here you know which is crazy the amount of anxiety that social media and like what we post like instills in us it's such an unhealthy kind of, I don't know, it's so unhealthy, just period, point blank. But if Twitter and Instagram started doing this tomorrow, it's like, that's really my only reason. It's like, if I think you're cute or something, like, all right, I'm going to check you out every now and then. That's like, I'm guilty as charged. I don't, I, I, I don't know what else to tell you. It's not like I'm like, I, there are very few people, if any, that I actually give a fuck to creep on. You know, I don't, I don't need to creep on anybody just you know i it's weird and all, all these people are just like like oh god if like they start showing profile views i'm gonna have to like uh you know delete all my social media and it's like you gotta be like on some stalker levels to like have to say that if you're like visiting a profile like 30 times a day then yeah you need help you probably should delete your social media but if you're just checking out somebody because they're cute or whatever who and like you know not that they necessarily have to know you just like, you know, as long as, it, you know, as long as you know, who gives a fuck? Let them think whatever they want. You know, this entire time, you're probably checking them out. They have no idea. They have no rhyme or reason to think anything. But now that like they can see it, people want to conceal it. You know, it's such a strange, such a strange thing to be a part of in this, you know, social media dominant world. I, man, I don't know. And, uh, you know, shout out to my TikTok crush if you're watching this. <laughs> Oh my god, man! I don't know. I don't really stalk too many people on on social media. There's like no need for it. I don't like really care unless like I haven't seen you in a while. Like you haven't popped up on my news feed. That's really it. But I don't like. I have too many like things to do. Too many responsibilities to like dedicate time to like creep a profile all the time. I can't. It's just not. You know. Like come on. And if you're listening to this, just like feeling called out for creeping like don't feel called out it's okay we all we've all done it but rethink your priorities maybe <laughs> you know what i'm saying like you know go for a walk go watch the new season of stranger things or something which i gotta watch then the next half is like starting soon 
and I have yet to watch it. It's crazy. It's so weird. I don't know. Go watch a movie or something. Go watch something. Go read the news. Go read. Which, speaking of, of the news, I read earlier, earlier this uh, this past week, um, Elon Musk is actually, what a, what a fucking segue. Elon Musk. I'm sorry for blowing into the mic. Elon Musk, excuse me, third time's the charm is on his way to becoming a trillionaire apparently and i don't know i didn't read all the details but my first thought is just like what the fuck do you do with a trillion dollars like let alone never mind a million or a billion because that's like what do you even do with a million but a trillion dollars you have the entire world in your hands right there i i just know for a fact that myself if i were ever a billionaire or a trillionaire at that I wouldn't buy a boat. I don't know why. People with money always like are like, oh yeah, I got a boat. I bought a yacht. I got this. I got that. You know, whatever kind of variation of a boat. I just don't care for boats. First of all, I don't like going in the water. I'm not like, I I, first, I hate cruises. I don't, I don't like being in the water because like, you know, if you get stuck in the water, that's it. You're fucked. I don't want to be trapped in the water. Mm, excuse me. But I don't know. It just seems like a waste. Like, I don't know. Maybe it's just because I'm a city kid. I just like, you know, I think I would buy a jet before anything, which, you know, don't attack me, anybody just like, oh, come on, harmful to the environment and stuff like that. But it's just more feasible for me to like go like I would want to go and travel and see the world and like not deal with like TSA and like all the lines and all the freaking dirty people around me, you know. So I would buy a jet way before I would buy a boat. Like, I don't know any kind of boat like even if it's just like a fishing boat to just like uh you know hang out and just like go out for the day and i don't give a i could care less for a freaking boat or a yacht i don't care and a trillion with a trillion dollars i i would not buy a boat that's like the last thing if you know assuming that it would even be on my list of anything it would be the last thing i would buy just not just no i always said though if i were to become a millionaire or if i had money I would invest it in something, like something that I like. Wait, let me see. How much time are we running into? Okay, this will be a short one. We could wrap up soon. But um, I always said, like, I would invest it in something I like. And so what do I like? I like concerts. I love, well, I love going to shows. I don't go to as many now, but I always had this idea of just, like, kind of opening, like, a concert venue and just, like, in my neighborhood, because we don't have any in my neighborhood and just like have it be like the spot and just have all kinds of artists perform there Not, nothing big think like um if anybody has ever been to playstation theater in times square like something like that which is now it's like a called pavilion or something uh palladium it's called palladium times square playstation's uh lease expired so that's why they're they closed they're not playstation theater but they're now palladium but I think it's palladium i'll have to fact check that but yeah something like that like a space like that big where it's like ba- like smaller bands come and perform you know uh different genres and you know i it's always been not a dream of mine but it's always something i would be like this is what i would do if i had this kind of money and i, I just thought it would be like a cool idea i've thought of names for it before i won't share them because somebody might copy them but yeah i think that would be cool it's interesting I don't know. It's just so much to go into like a venue though. It's hard. And like this pandemic really showed like how much work it goes and how much work goes into like keeping up a venue, which a lot of them closed during the pandemic. And another one, another favorite of mine, small, you know, little venue in Williamsburg knitting factory is actually closing at the end of uh, the summer at the end of August, I believe. And it's a little bittersweet. It's one of the first like venues I entered as like a legal adult, You know, when I turned 21, that's like the first, like I went to a emo night there once, very small emo night, but I could drink legally and I was just hanging out. I've been to a bunch of like small shows, seen a lot of my favorite bands there. And, you know, a lot of great memories at that place, a lot of great shows, a lot of great bands. And it's bittersweet, very bittersweet. I don't know what they're going to do with the space. I don't know if like it's still going to be like a venue in the future or something. I have no idea, but RIP Knitting Factory r.i.p netting factory it sucks man i'm seeing i'm going to a show there pretty soon actually which i don't go to many shows these days my last concert actually now that we're on the topic of concerts and stuff uh my last show was bad bunny back in march 
which if you haven't seen that uh recap episode episode 33 go watch that shit bitch come on i'm sorry you're not a bitch but go li- go listen and go watch that episode <laughs> man um yeah bad bunny was my last show and i don't know i don't know what it is i think it's maybe the maybe the kind of shows that i've been going to you know my throughout my late teens early 20s i just like kind of feel disconnected from that scene uh like the pop punk like emo scene i just like i don't know it took the whole like the whole pandemic like i was away from that stuff but there was also like you know that that's i'm sure there's that's a small part of it because even when things started opening up again like i went to sad summer i went to you know other shows i've been to other shows like general admission like that um you know genre and stuff but uh, on the online presence of a lot of people like you know collectively it's just kind of i i i don't associate with it much and so i think a lot of the reason like i went to like so many shows is because i felt like you know there was such like a unified kind of like sense of community there but i don't know i guess i've also i've gotten older my priorities have changed a bit and like my mindset my whole view of like a lot of things has changed um yeah i feel like there's a lot of drama and a lot of bullshit that goes on in the pop punk community that i just like kind of shifted away from it which i'm sure people have noticed that i don't really tweet about pop punk or like let alone you know post songs about it about it uh you know i don't really post songs like of the of that genre that much or like i don't like i don't keep on top of a lot of bands these days and it's mostly like you know there are like diff- like different reasons like you know there's bands that like break up because like a lot of it has to do you know this whole cancel culture thing and it's just like i don't want to be a part of like that you know a whole mob which on twitter is just like i hate to say i hate to sound like these fucking people like you know just like oh yeah it's a mob mentality out there you know they're trying to cancel you know whatever fox news and all that stuff but it's just like i and it's not that i think i'm above like these people at all i'm just like i have more important shit to do than to sit and bitch and attack people for liking certain bands or staying fans of certain bands and just like you know all this negative energy i don't have the time and energy for it you know i i I, i'm like you know it's people my age and even older that are just like non-stop with the negativity and i don't know it's just like what the fuck are we doing here so i see that and i'm just like kind of like yeah no and so in turn i'm just like you know i just like stay off of twitter i don't really engage with posts and stuff and so i just stopped going to you know so many shows you know i've got a couple this summer but um you know we'll see we'll see what happens but do i see like tour announcements and i'm I'm like oh shit i gotta go to this yeah sure but like sometimes i'm just like "Eh, okay whatever i mean just like i just like i don't know and my mom predicted this way back like way before the pandemic was even a thought she's like yeah you're gonna get tired of this lifestyle eventually and you know just like because i would just go i remember that one time there was one weekend where i did five shows you know they were five days back to back it was uh started on thursday in the city thursday in the city friday friday also in the city i think they were all in the city yeah those three shows in the city and then sunday it was friday it was thursday friday saturday in the city two nights at the gramercy one night at lpr and then sunday was at um it was in philly sunday was in philly i drove to philly came back and then that the following monday i was back at the gramercy so for for another show so it was five shows back to back and i was determined to go to them all and i was exhausted sure but you know it was it was an experience and i'm glad i did that can i do that now no fuck no i'm not doing it my back hurts too much my neck hurts my neck is killing me now remember last week or the week before i had neck pain on this side i couldn't turn my head or anything now it's on this side it's on the other side less severe i don't know what that's about but um 
yeah, I just can't do it. I just like physically, I don't want to. And just like, aside from the people, it's just like physically, no, I just like can and like, you know, I don't know. I don't know. It's a whole bunch of different things, but for the most part, it's just like, you know, I don't want to be around like these toxic fan fucking fanboys and fangirls and all that shit. It's just like enough already. Don't like stop attacking people, you know? So it's just hella toxic, hella toxic. I don't know, man. It's just like, I get like why people are angry, but I feel like people find a reason to stay angry always. And, you know, people might be listening to this and disagree. People might think like otherwise people might, you know, say I, I'm, I'm missing the point. But I don't know, man. It's just my thoughts, just my opinion. Which, you know, I always say on here, we, we, we should be able to have different opinions on things without having to like ostracize each other. You know, unless those opinions are blatantly harmful and just dead wrong, of course, you know. Not to, like, compare it to, like, the whole political, like, scheme of things going on in this country. Not at all. But, you know, you believe what you want to believe. You want to, like, do whatever you want to do. That's all right. It doesn't affect me. You know? And what I think shouldn't affect anybody else either. You know? So, I know I'm very... I know I come on here and I come off very strong with my opinions and my thoughts. And I think, like, that's that and that's that. But it's just my opinion, man. Like, you can disagree with me. I really don't care you know disagree with me go right ahead i don't know yeah i mean for the most part at least you know sometimes i even dread like concerts that are coming up that i know are just like general admission i'm just like oh fuck I, like it's like you know you get excited when they're announced but when the actual day comes you just don't like physically maybe that day you're just exhausted and you know you just worked a whole shift and like i'm at that point in my life where i Unless we have plans, like, already, like, if I'm with somebody, like, you know, we have plans, excuse me, um, like, if I go home, I'm staying home, like, don't expect me to, to get me out at that point, you know, sure, there are those rare days where I'll, like, spontaneously, whatever, just, like, go out and, like, do something, whatever, but for the most part, I'm just, like, I'm home, I'm home, I want to relax, and I don't know, the only exception is, as far as, like, concerts go, is, um, if it's, like, which I never thought this would be me, but bigger shows like stadium shows where it's like seated and I know like, okay, I can relax. You know, I don't have to stand around and have my foot cramp up and shit like that. Like that's, that's fine. Like, you know, same thing for bad bunny. I worked the day I saw bad bunny, but I got out early. It was a Saturday. I went, you know, saw bad bunny. I was hype as fuck. It was like probably one of the best shows I've ever been to, if not the best concert I've ever been to. And I've been to like a hundred plus shows, which so it's saying a lot. He really set the bar high, that motherfucker. Holy shit. But anyway, um, like bigger stadium shows, like, you know, stuff like that where I know I'll be comfortable. I'm not gonna be like, you know, in a big sweaty crowd. That's fine. I don't care. I'll just go tired as fuck. I, I really don't care. Cause I know I'll like wake up eventually. But there's so much energy put into like just standing there and stuff, you know, so it's hard. I don't know. I'm just an old man now, just an old man who does his podcast and goes to work and does, you know, very few other things. I feel like, you know, very few other things that I actually like, you know, freaking promote and put out there, but it is what it is. You know, I actually bought, um, post Malone tickets. He's playing at MSG. I got tickets for that. That's going to be, I haven't seen post decent. I've only seen post like once back in 2018 it was like one of the last like general admission shows and i remember i saw him at this venue this outdoor venue in philly and like three fights broke out and it was a fucking great time and this is the first time i'm seeing him now and it's gonna be quite the contrast you know to go from a small outdoor venue in philly to the garden that's like man he he really blew up he really blew up and wow I'm excited. This is in this is in uh, October, I believe, and so I'm excited. I really do love Post Malone. I saw I love his new album. His new album is very a little different from like what we're used to in the past. Like um, like that tour I went to in 2018. The tour I saw him on was uh was the Beer Bongs and Bentleys tour. I think so. Yeah, that's the one. 
and like the music uh for, from that record is just totally different from the music here it's very much you know much it's just different different vibe i can't even say like production wise it's like different but you know different style different uh story to be told there so that's gonna be fun it's gonna be a lot of fun and i have a lot more i i think i have more stadium shows like more you know like uh more arena shows than small like club shows these days which is fine you know i work hard i deserve to spend my money on like cool shit like that just fine. I never thought I would be the person to just like, you know, like, oh yeah, arena show and be excited. I just like, I want to see the artist. At this point in my life, I don't care about a fucking barricade. I don't care about, you know, being close up to my faves or anything. It's just like, you know, I just want to go for the vibes, enjoy the people around me. And that's it. That's really it, people. And that's what it's all about. You know, I remember like, showing up hours early camping out just to get you know as close to the front as possible and mind you this wasn't that long ago i'm gonna be 26 soon and this was like at 20 20 21 22 years old i was still i was doing this shit but you know it's fun and stuff you know whatever but in hindsight it's just like damn i was a crazy motherfucker that's a lot it's a freaking i remember back in 2017 i would like uh i had vip for all time low and i got there at like you know 12 o'clock to do all the vip shit and then like we get in early you know after you meet the band and all that stuff and um like you know the show didn't start to like five and so imagine going from like all that time like i had breakfast got to central park I, yeah central park they were playing and i hadn't eaten a goddamn thing until the show ended i remember the people I was with, we went to, we went to Applebee's afterwards, and for some reason I needed something crisp. Like I didn't even like go for water. I had a water there, but I'm just like, can I have a beer? Like I needed something crisp to kind of like wake up my taste buds. And so I had a Michelob Ultra after just like standing outside in the heat and you know sun and just feeling disgusting, sweaty. I had a freaking freaking beer. I had a freaking beer. I'm like, that's what I wanted. Like, that's stuff that I cannot do now at this age. I'm not fucking old. Like, 25... Listen, I'm 25 turning 26, but it's just like, you know, I cannot do that now. I will be, you know, I'll be hungover. You know, one sip of alcohol and, like, I, I'll have a headache sometimes. Like, depending on, the you know, what's going on that day. But it's so weird getting older. Like, just like, you know, at 23, maybe. 23, I was still drinking like a fish. But, um, you know, it's weird. It's weird. I think it was like, you know, definitely the more sedentary lifestyle that I led during the uh, lockdown and stuff like that probably has something to do with it. But, you know, it is what it is. And that's all we can really say about it. We just got to like go with whatever our bodies tell us, which is why I'm trying to work out and like try not to feel as shitty and not have so many aches and pains and stuff. Because I think the more you work out, the more active you are, the less like you experience those pains or and stuff like that. Or so I've heard. I don't know. I'm not a fitness expert. But we'll see. I said I was going to start working out June 1st. And here we are. It's almost July. And I have not worked out. I maybe worked out like one day. Like one night for like not that long. And I just like, you know, I got to get on top of it. Got to get on top of it. What time is it? Okay. This is actually a perfect time to wrap up, folks. Our time together has come to an end for this week. But fear not. We will be back next week. And, um... I could hear people going, oh, man. Imagine. I don't know. Self-deprecation. I don't know why. Um, this has been episode 44. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Thank you for watching. Once again, keep the homie fridge in your thoughts and prayers. Um, and, yeah, hopefully this episode comes out on time. Goddamn. Bye, everybody. Love you. See you next time. <laughs>